When the Hubble telescope was launched in 1990, most space games had just a plain star field as a backdrop. But once images started coming in, it changed how we imagined ourselves in space. No longer was it a cold vacuum, but a dynamic setting with stellar dust, colliding galaxies, and cosmic rays. Hubble has not only been humanity's eyes to the cosmos, it's been the source material for our imagination. Now, Hubble's had a long and successful run, and like most games, there is an end boss. And in this case, it's planet Earth. What? Yeah. Hubble is falling back to Earth, and there's currently no way to stop it. Which is a bit weird to hear since it's in space, and space is space, right? Well, the Hubble telescope is in low Earth orbit, where the upper atmosphere still produces drag. Normally, Hubble runs into small amounts of atoms and molecules, and the drag is slight. But sometimes, the upper atmosphere dramatically expands, which drops Hubble's altitude. The cause of these expansions are solar flares. These images are from NASA's Solar Dynamic Observatory. The sun produces powerful solar storms. These flares release colossal amounts of energized radiation towards Earth. It heats up our upper atmosphere, increasing its density and expands its reach. More density means more stuff for Hubble to run into and can easily cause a drop of altitude by kilometers per day. Now NASA knows that Hubble is descending. I mean, it's no stranger to danger. This spacecraft has had its share of problems. After its launch, gyros for stabilization have needed replacing, many systems have been updated, but most notably, the primary mirror was originally off by just a couple of microns, enough to produce blurry images. I mean, just the worst. So basically, Hubble was suffering from what we call in the gaming world, never buy the base game syndrome. Fortunately, these were fixed with the help of astronauts, a few space shuttles, and the quick thinking of NASA engineers. Like the time they used Tinker Toys to help fix this high gain antenna, but more on that later. With each resurface mission, Hubble has been reboosted. That's what they call it, reboost. A reboost of altitude. And fortunately, recent solar activity has been fairly mild, and Hubble hasn't dropped a great amount since the last resurfacing mission in 2009. But more urgently, Hubble's reaction wheels are aging, and its three fine guidance sensors are slowly degrading. It's likely that its instruments will die before Hubble's re-entry. But there's a greater danger here. Hubble's reaction wheels and sensors are used to stabilize and reorient the telescope. If these fail, Hubble will not be able to keep itself upright when it hits denser atmosphere. If Hubble starts to tumble, there will be no stopping an uncontrollable and unpredictable reentry. The telescope does have one thing that could preserve it. The last servicing mission left behind this. It's called a soft docking capture mechanism. It's like a life ring that another spacecraft can latch onto. Originally, this was to bring Hubble back to Earth, but after the end of the space shuttle program, the plan now is to either deorbit for a controlled reentry, so it doesn't drop on top of people, or somehow reboost and repair the telescope. Currently, there are no spacecraft that can do either, which puts Hubble in an awkward position. It's kind of like having a life preserver on in the middle of the ocean and people back on shore have to reinvent the boat. But this is NASA we're talking about. One of my favorite stories about fixing Hubble happened when its high gain antenna got stuck. Without it, we would have no way of getting data back from Hubble. Back then, NASA engineers didn't have 3D computer models to help visualize problems. So engineers went to a toy store, bought a set of Tinker Toys, and built a model of the high gain antenna. They figured out that it was a cable that was jamming the antenna's operating arc which enabled controllers just to avoid the area and continue with the mission. Okay, now, what I love about this story is that they didn't have the tools to fix a problem, so they built them. Now NASA is doing it again. The fixing things, not the, not the other things. NASA is building a robotic spacecraft called Restore-L, which will capture and resurface a satellite all on its own. Also, aboard the International Space Station, NASA is developing a suite of sensors and artificial intelligence called RAVEN that will one day autopilot spacecraft during rendezvous. Though these technologies are years away from completion, there is a new hope for space observatories. I mean, we haven't run out of space to explore, right? 
The James Webb Space Telescope will expand on and improve observations made by the Hubble Telescope. Its primary mirror is 6.5 meters in diameter, compared to Hubble's at 2.4, making it seven times more powerful. Its unique instruments will see through thick stellar gas and be able to see back to when the first stars were formed. In the same light, the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, TESS, will discover thousands of exoplanets in orbit around the brightest stars in the sky. Its stellar survey is unlike anything NASA has ever done. Four wide field cameras will cover 85% of the entire sky, allowing TESS to monitor over 200,000 stars. These represent not only Hubble's successors, they are the apex of next generation space telescopes. Hubble's eventual and inevitable end will not be the end of astronomy. Exploration is what we do. Whether we use tinker toys or robots, the future is ours to see and we'll see a whole lot more real soon. Hey, you wanna see some more right now? Here, the Sanger telescope, where we can actually see the jets of a pulsar move. Or here, some links somewhere and in the description of where you can experience the science being done today that will one day take us to the stars. Or at the very least, a new expansion of a game we already own. Thanks for watching. And press the button. Pressing button.